All right, hello everyone. Uh, my name's Dan, I'll be leading the demonstration today, taking over for Ansley. Um, in this little demo of Indicative, we're going to just kind of review some Indicative use cases and see a live demo of it, uh, and just kind of go over the basics of what Indicative is, but really it's just a customer analytics platform that connects directly to your data warehouse. Really easy to use. Uh, the average user doesn't need any kind of knowledge of SQL or background in data to really get a lot out of the platform. Um, and with that, I really don't like wasting too much time. We'll kind of hop right into the live demonstration. So I'm going to share my screen here. Cool. All right. And hopefully everybody can see that. Yes, perfect. Okay. So I'm going to walk you through the indicative solution and try to answer a few questions in this demo, specifically how product teams can find out the answer to questions like what is your best path to conversion and what key features are really driving upsells and trying to figure out who your best customers really are. Uh, additionally, we're going to show how product and marketing teams can use Indicative to understand product engagement and to see where users are successful and where there's points of friction. Now, it's important for me to point out at the onset that the data set we're using today, it's from a fictitious subscription online box company called Petbox. And for the demo, I'm going to be wearing the hat of a mobile product manager at Petbox. So I'm going to walk you through how a mobile PM would use Indicative to understand the impact that the Petbox app has on subscriber conversion rates as well as on one-off sales. So to start, I'll walk you through some of my core metrics and KPIs on the dashboard, and then I'll dive into a few of the analyses to show you, you know, just how fast and easy it is to build them in Indicative. And the key is really to show how Indicative will help you better drive conversions, increase engagement, and retain customers. So to begin, uh, we'll start off with an example of a dashboard, which is what we're looking at right here. And, you know, when a customer logs in, the first thing that they'll typically do is review their KPIs on the dashboard. Dashboards are used by product and marketing people as well as by senior executives to get a quick and clear view of how customers are engaging with their product. They are entirely customizable depending on your specific analytic needs. So all of these can be moved around, resized, reshaped, and reorganized. It's also really easy to share a dashboard. So you can share it through a publicly shareable link through scheduled reports, you can print them out, and then you can actually even embed them in emails or in web pages. So as I scroll through this dashboard, you'll get your first look at Indicative's key four analysis tools, which I'll dive deeper into in just a moment. Uh, up top here, we've got a few different examples of segmentation queries. And you can use segmentation queries to show groups of customers that all share common characteristics. And if you'll notice, uh, Indicative supports a variety of different ways to visualize all of these different queries. So these are all different segmentation queries. Uh, here's an example of a journey query. And we use the journey tool to map out the common paths that users are taking throughout your product, either going to a specific event or going from a specific event. So what do they do after they create a count or what paths are really leading them to making purchases? Next, we've got an example of a multi-path funnel. And this is a key differentiator for Indicative because we're really the only company that can show you multiple customer journeys in a single analysis to measure the impact an action has on the funnel. And last but not least, we have a couple of examples of cohort queries, uh, which we use to monitor and track repeat user engagement. So anytime you can clearly define a group of users to Indicative and then identify one event or behavior that you want to track, it's a great opportunity to use the cohort tool, uh, analyze retention, activation, and engagement rates overall. Uh, but we're going to start today by diving into uh, our journey query here. So journeys is a pretty simple to use tool, but it's really pretty incredibly powerful. You might have also heard this called the Sankey chart. Uh, it enables you again to visualize all of the customer paths either from a starting point or to an ending point. So again, you can see what are customers doing after downloading the app or what are users doing prior to subscribing or even to churning. 
And in this particular example, we were trying to understand what are the common paths to purchasing a product on a mobile device. So here we can see that a lot of users actually do a site visit prior to making a purchase, even on a mobile device. And I'm noticing that the pet cam event is happening frequently as well. So we could probably infer that the pet cam is a pretty strong driver of conversion. But let me go ahead, I will clear this away and then actually rebuild it all with you live. So I always like to start just by titling this with a question. And here I'm just asking what are users, or we'll say mobile users doing prior to converting. Uh, and then every querying indicative starts with the same query builder. And that's just right here at selecting an event. So when I click that, I get all of the different events that you're tracking and sending to indicative. And if I'm looking for a purchasing event, I'll just click P to quickly highlight that event from the list. And then I'll make sure I'm ending with that purchasing event, click play, and then I'll run my initial query. And actually one thing I do wanna do is add a quick filtering because I am a mobile product manager, so I'm only really concerned with mobile devices. So I'm gonna add a quick filtering to make sure that my devices are only those mobile devices. So I'll allow Android, Android tablet, we'll skip over desktop, but we will take iPad and iPhone users as well. I'll apply, apply that quick filter and then just rerun my query again. So really within about 15 seconds, you're able to put together the analysis that I had on the screen originally. And once this loads, I'll have the information I need to start making informed decisions quickly. And if you'll notice, I didn't need the help of a data analyst or anybody who knew how to write SQL. There are a lot of ways that I can customize this analysis. So the first thing I might wanna do is merge repeated steps together just to eliminate some of the noise on the chart. And, you know, again, I am seeing the site visit event occur, but because I am a mobile product manager, you know, maybe I'm not really concerned with that. So I'll just quickly exclude those site visit events as well. And this final visualization, you know, now that we have it, we'll be able to have an idea of what users are doing and where they're going, where they're spending their time. Um, it, it's a good time to point out that Indicative does a really nice job of kind of connecting our different analyses tools together. So for example, I could move pretty quickly from this journey query to a funnel query or even to a cohort analysis just by clicking in on the path that we're interested in, you know, digging deeper into. So for example, if I wanted to create a quick funnel here, looking at users who open the app, connect their pet cam, and then purchase a product, I'm able to do that rather quickly. And then we're able to you know, start looking at those conversion rates, dive deeper into those different groups of users, even segment them off for further analyses, and we can start to really analyze user drop-off as well. I built a new query. If I wanna save it, all I have to do is click Save as New and just select the dashboard I wanna save it to, click Save. And now I don't have to worry about losing what I've just built, but I can go right back into that journey query. So from here, I'm gonna pause, Check the chat to see if there's any questions before I move on to dive deeper into the funnel analysis tool. And at the moment, it doesn't look like there's any questions. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and head back to the dashboard now and find that journey query. I'm sorry, the funnel query. So we understand that not every user has the same journey, right? And we built our analyses tools to really reflect that. Uh, Indicative is the only analytics platform with this powerful multipath functionality. Now, use cases for the multipath funnel may vary from understanding conversion paths to detecting user drop-off or doing A-B testing. Uh, my favorite example of this comes from one of our customers, Prezi. And if you're not familiar with Prezi, they provide an online presentation software. They first came to us because their product team was unable to analyze the results of an experiment that they were running to try and drive adoption. And the test was basically designed to see if adoption rates were higher if they started users off with a templated slide versus a blank slide. And the multi-path funnel tool allowed them to really clearly see that templated slides were, worked best. So then they went ahead and made that product change with the confidence of the data to back that decision up. 
Uh, let me walk you through the use case we have built out here. So this is, again, me wearing my hat as a mobile product manager. And here I want to understand whether or not the app is actually a driver of conversion. So if you'll notice, there's two different pathways we can look at. Uh, one pathway, the bottom one, is for users who did download the app, where the top pathway is for those users who did not download the app. And if you'll notice, in between open pet cam and subscribe, we get this final percentage here, and that indicates our actual conversion rate. So I can see that those users who did not download the app converted at a 42.73% rate, whereas the users who did converted at a 44.67% rate. So it's slightly higher. If you download the app, you're more likely to convert. Uh, let me show you how easy it is to rebuild this. So again, I'll clear this away. And here I'll title it, um, does the app drive conversion? All I need to do now is select those events in the right order, right? So I wanted users to first create a profile, then download the app, then if you remember from the journey query, we saw that the pet cam was a strong driver of conversion. So I'll add that in too. And then ultimately our conversion event here is called subscribe. And the last thing I wanna do is just make that download app step optional so that we can see if it's impacting our subscribing rates or not. So now I've recreated that query um, and I can look in here now and see, okay, well, how many of my users overall am I actually getting to download the app? Because again, I now know that users who download the app are more likely to subscribe. And maybe, you know, from here, I want to send a personalized message to encourage users to download the app if they didn't download the app. Or maybe I want to send them something immediately after they download the app, encouraging they, them to subscribe. In Indicative, this is really simple to do. Uh, all I have to do is click into the group that I want to target and then create a user segment out of that group. And once I have that user segment created, uh, what I can actually do is I can either uh, use that segment to run other analyses on within Indicative, so run a cohort or a segmentation query off of them, or I can export that group of users uh, through our user segment API to connect to any marketing automation automation platform that you're using. So if you use Marketo or MailChimp, for example, it becomes very simple to export that user information to those uh, third party providers. The other thing I can do is I can actually dig into these groups of users on an individual basis. So when this loads on the left hand side, I'll see all of our unique user IDs in a table view. And on the right, I'll see all of the uh, overlying user properties that we're tracking along with these individual users. And from here, if I just pick a user at random, uh, we'll be able to see on the left-hand side, all of their, again, user properties that we're tracking. And then on the right-hand side, we'll see a timeline of all of their different engagements with the Pet Box app. Uh, broken down session by session, and then each session is actually broken down on a event by event basis. So we can dig in to see exactly what product they were purchasing, or, or maybe, you know, if you wanted to, you could even use this to start debugging or drilling down into a particular funnel that just was out of the ordinary and didn't really seem to make sense. So a lot of unique functionality built into that funnel tool. Um, if there's no questions, oh, I see one question here. So how do we integrate with e-commerce platforms? Yeah, so William, that's done through our um, user segment API. And you can use that to connect to marketing automation platforms. Uh, you can actually use this to, again, if you want to create a user segment. Uh, once you have that user segment, you could even just download those users into a CSV file and then use that CSV file of all their information to export that to any other e-commerce platforms. All right, so from here, I'm gonna head back to the dashboard just for a quick review. Uh, so we'll shoot down here, product dashboard. Uh, and then just to wrap up, you know, again, we use the journey tool to kind of quickly get a high level view of the common pathways that users are taking throughout our platform. Uh, we saw that the multi-path funnel tool allows us to 
kind of visualize different customer journeys, do some A-B testing, and measure the impact that one event might have on a customer's likelihood to convert. We use dashboards just to quickly monitor KPIs and share information internally and externally. And you know, ultimately, we're seeing that you can visualize your data in a this software without having any technical knowledge or knowledge of SQL either. So product and marketing people can run their own analyses. And that's really all I had planned to talk about today. I'm happy to answer any further questions that you may have. William, I'm glad to see hopefully that answered your question as well. Um, but okay, uh, I know a lot of people often have questions about pricing, but we do have plans now starting at just $249 a month. If you have any questions otherwise, or you'd like to get in touch with us, feel free to shoot us an email at sales at indicative.com. But if there's no other questions, I appreciate everybody's time today. Uh, I hope you will give us a shout if you have any other questions, um, but thanks.